What did they do? You've seen those documentaries of how you know, animals go after their, their, their prey. A person's craving for wealth and status, especially status, subhanAllah, these days. Regardless whether it's religious, whether it's secular, they, they, they run after it. So imagine, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you for certain things. He created you to worship Him, and what do we do? We go after other things. We go after money, we go after status, we go after position. And subhanAllah, you see that the majority of the people are caught up in what? In a rat race. The kafar, they want this. The disbelievers want you to be busy in your life, working hard. They don't want to give you time. They don't want you to have enough time to sit down every day and recite the Qur'an. How many of us read the Qur'an daily? How many? How many people here actually know how to recite the Qur'an? They're not many. We call ourselves Muslims. And that guide, that Qur'an, that Mus'haf that we have in our houses, and everyone has it in their house, we may have two, three, four, five of them. We hang them up on the walls, and we don't know how to recite it. How do we call ourselves Muslims? When you fall into something, when you fall into a problem, where do you go? Instead of opening up the Qur'an and finding the problems, no, we have to sit there and call a sheikh. And then you get a fatwa from this guy, and get a different fatwa from that guy, and you get a different fatwa from that guy. And how many Muslims, because of wealth, have actually left their deen? How many Muslims have actually stopped praying? How many Muslims have stopped fasting? How many people have stopped actually even spending money to go to Hajj? They say, I'm too young. Do you know, oh brother, or oh sister, if you have enough money to go to Hajj, and you have no sicknesses, you got everything, you are, it's put upon you to go to Hajj when you have the money. But these days the people are too stingy. They think, what, $5,000 to go to Hajj? How am I going to do that? How can you spend so much money just to go to see uh, a black brick... Uh, uh, object and we're going to just walk around it and it's hot. You know, the people, there's about a million people there. It's really awkward. But subhanAllah, when you go to Hajj and come back, it's like the best thing you've ever done. And you see the smile, you see the nur on the people's faces when they come back. They love it. And every year the people see it or hear about it, they wish, their hearts actually wish they were there with them. And how many people that Allah hasn't blessed yet to go, go to Hajj, they actually want to go, they have this love to go there. And then we have these types of people saying, what, $5,000? How am I supposed to go? Do you not think that these so-called Muslims have taken wealth as a god? And this is a serious question. Because the heart, it is attached to something. It has to follow something. Whether it follows your desire, whether it follows wealth, whether it follows Allah, it has to follow something. This is the heart. These people they reject and the, uh, the, they reject the laws and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just to make an, an extra dollar. They reject the laws and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just to make them, themselves look powerful. They reject the laws and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just to show that they have a say in this life. I want to ask a question to all these presidents and prime ministers. On the day of judgment, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? Do you think you can get your police or your army to fight Allah? These people forget. These people forget that He is a creator. These people don't understand Allah created the night and the day as signs. Look within yourself. Look at your body. Allah created you perfect. And look how He created the, the, the male and look how He created the female. It's amazing. Imagine Allah only created you with one eye. Would you function perfectly? No. Imagine Allah, He created you with one hand. Would you, would you um, function perfectly? No. Imagine you were created with one leg. You're going to be, you know, they'll call you skippy, you have to hop everywhere. And how many Muslims do we know, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam? How many Muslims do you know that have given up the Jum'ah prayer just for their work? Their excuse, and wallahi, you speak to the people, you speak to the brothers. You say, Akhi, why don't you go to Jum'ah? 
What's your excuse? What are you going to say to Allah? They say, Wallah, akhi, I've got work. I have to feed my family. My poor family has to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, Iza nudiya li salati min yawm al jum'ati fas'au ila dhikri Allah, fas'au ila dhikri Allah wa dharu al bayt, thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. Are you who believe? And inshallah we all believe. When the call is made for Friday prayer, hurry, rush, run to the, rem- the remembrance of Allah and leave off business. Surely that is best for you if you but you. Subhanallah. Allah is giving you this guidance. And it is better for you if you only knew. I'm sure we all have people in our families that don't go pray Jummah. Do you go remind these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually commanding. He's not asking you. He's commanding you to drop everything, to leave everything when the time to, of, of uh, Jummah comes. In this specific time, it is time for you to remember your Lord, not to remember your business. And sometimes if you own a business, it's hard. You think about it. You're about to go to Jummah, someone rings you up. Maybe Abu Hamza, you know, he, he sells photocopiers. Someone calls him and says, I need a fax machine now. And the brother can maybe make $200, right? half an hour's work. How hard is it? How hard is it in this day and age? Are you going to leave it or are you going to go for the $200? If you knew what was good for you, you'd leave off the business. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. This prayer is so important that it is the only prayer that you can actually physically run to. You're not allowed to run to any other prayer except for the Jummah prayer. That's how important it is. And if you know, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if you know any Muslim that has reached the age of puberty, remind him of what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, I wanted to ask a man to lead the prayer so that he could go out and burn the houses down of the person who doesn't go pray Jummah. That's how serious it is. He wanted to go burn the houses down. Also the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever does not attain three Friday prayers without a valid reason, Allah will set a seal on his heart. Allah will seal his heart. Also in another authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Either they, meaning the people who don't go to Jummah prayer, stop neglecting the Friday prayer, or Allah will set a seal on their heart so they can never find uh, the right path. You will not be able to, you, Allah will not let you be guided. And Allahu Akbar. How many Muslims do we know? How many Muslims know, uh, Muslims that we know that seem like Allah has put a seal on their hearts? I was talking to a brother yesterday. We were walking from uh, the center to the, to the prayer hall. This brother who was wearing gold on his fingers. And his brother's next to him. I said, Yaqi, don't you, don't you tell your brother that it's haram for him to wear gold? And he goes, you talk to him. I go, Yaqi, I'm not I'm trying to upset you. But the gold, there's three rings on his fingers. I go, this gold is actually fire on your finger. And he goes, what do you mean, man? I go, it's serious. Why do you do this for? He goes, they're expensive. I go, so what if they're expensive? So anyway, he took them off. And I go, yeah, Akhi. I go, I bet you, once we depart, you're going to put them back on your fingers. He goes, yeah, it's true. But why did you take them off in the first place? Do you fear the Bashar? Do you fear the creation? Or do you fear Allah? Look how Allah has put a seal on certain people's hearts. Also, people say they want to be happy in this life. And I ask you all a question. What is happiness? What makes you happy? Does happiness mean having a good wife or a good husband? And especially for the sisters, having a good husband that cares for you, that takes, you know, he does everything for you. He brings you what you want. You have children that obey you. Is this happiness? Or does happiness mean having a good job that you can actually afford to buy what you want? Is this happiness? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually created this earth just to, for us to feel happy and to do what we want on this earth? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, don't think that Allah has created you for no reason. Don't think that your creation is for a waste. Also don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you just for the sake of history. He didn't put you on this earth so that we can write down, you know, 
so and so lived in this year 